Welcome to the Bonzo Stuff Podcast. I'm Scott Martin and happy Easter. It's a great time to spend with your trees. I love it. Bit of grounds maintenance, fertilising, give your trees a bit of an autumn prune. If you're anything like me and you've got um, any of these eucalypts around the yard, they've made a hell of a mess towards the end of summer. So it's a good time for me to get in there and clean up the yard a little bit as well and clean the benches because... Soon enough, I'll be uh, I'll be rabbiting on about um, cle- keeping your work area clear and your benches free of debris and all that sort of stuff because of the mess and the bugs and all the general rubbish that comes along with uh, with trees dropping their leaves. So now's a good time for me to get in there nice and early and give them a um, give them a bit of a clean up. Anyway, today's episode of the uh, the Bonsai Stuff podcast. I'm going to talk about needle removal techniques and this is thanks to joe i got uh, got prompted to talk about this on the podcast so here it is i'm going to talk about uh, the different types of pine species you know white pines mugos radiatas scots black pines whatever and i'll just talk about how i remove needles because we're coming into that season with having to do the autumn winter work on those trees so i want to talk a little bit about that and um, i also want to talk about a follow-on from last week podcast now you might remember that was where we talked about the visual weight of our bonsai and the size of the pads and foliage mass and all that sort of stuff and in conjunction with that as I alluded to last week I want to talk about knowing when to put your scissors down because it's really important to know when to stop it's uh, it's easy to keep going and sort of undo all the hard work that you've done so I want to sort of balance out last week's episode with what I do when I know I've, uh, I've done enough. So knowing when to put the scissors down is really important. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so let's start with needle reduction or needle removal techniques. Now, this is really important for our pines to balance the strength and resources of the tree. That's why we, we remove the needles. We try and obviously, you know, make the stronger areas a bit weaker and we can do that by removing a little bit more needle in those areas and allow the weaker areas to get stronger by leaving a little bit more needle in those areas. Remember, more needle equals more strength. So this is a technique, one, as a, as a preface to what we're going to talk about, you've got to work out whether it's right to do it. That's the most important part. You don't just automatically jump in and start removing needles off your, your bonsai. It's a matter of working out and saying, okay, is it part of the plan to remove the needles because I need to whatever it is? You know, you can use it as one of the techniques in our arsenal to make sure that we can get that balance of our of our bonsai, which is the you know, the primary aim. It's the aim of the game, really, is to to balance the strength and resources. So now the needle removal techniques. Let's talk about uh, Japanese black pine, one of the most common pines that we've got around the world, basically. And for me, these are my techniques that I use. There are other ways of doing it, of course, and you know, all I can talk about is what I do and what works for me. And with the black pines, it's needle plucking, okay? So needle plucking is using a nice strong pair of tweezers with you know, a good bit, of, good bit of grip on the end of them for the, for the tweezers to grab the needles and pluck them out. The technique is that you pluck in the direction the needles are growing. If you grab those needles and you pull them opposite, in the, in the opposite direction to which they're growing, it's a really good chance you're actually going to tear the whole thing out, tear the sheath. And the grey part at the bottom of the needles is the sheath, and that's connected to the branch, and inside that sits the needles. Now, the technique you can use is you can pluck one needle at a time in the direction they're growing. They come out really, really easy when you when you do it that way, or much, much easier. You can grab the sheath at the bottom and pull it in the direction that it's growing or you can grab both needles without grabbing the sheath and just pluck it out and leave the sheath there. Now normally for me, how I do it when I want to work through my trees quite quickly is I will have the needles up and I will be grabbing and plucking in a a direction that the needles are growing. So my, my tweezers are in the same line as what the needles are and I'll grab one needle at a time and I'll pluck them out and I'll leave the sheath there. I'm not worried about that being there because I know after a few weeks it'll just brush off the tree anyway. So unless the tree is going to go into a show, I'm not going to fuss too much about making sure that I've got a perfectly clear branch with no sheath on it. 
The reason we don't want to tear the branch by plucking the needles in the opposite direction is, one, you're going to tear it. You're going to make a, a wound that the tree has to try and heal. But secondly, there might be a dormant bud sitting just below the surface. So if you if you leave that sheath intact, if you leave the bark intact, then you're leaving that potential bud intact as well. So it's just good practice to, to pluck in the direction the needles are growing and you can do one needle at a time, two needles at a time, grab it by the sheath, pluck the whole thing out, make it nice and clean, whatever whatever works. I don't use my fingers. I find that you're actually quite clumsy when you use your hands to remove needles and you'll do more damage than good. So if you're pushing in with, with any part of your hand, gentle reminder that if you can feel the needles pushing against your skin, like pricking your skin, you're doing it wrong. You're in too close and you'll be doing more damage to those needles and breaking the tips of them. You won't see it straight away, but you know, you know, a few weeks' time you'll come back to that bonsai and you'll look at it and you'll see the brown tips where you've actually broken the needles that you've been working on. So so that's how I work with the Japanese black pines. The other other pines, now they're pretty much all the same. I'll start with white pines, Japanese white pine. The older needles generally tend to brush off and at this time of the year which is early autumn early fall you can see the old needles on there because they're starting to change color they're going that sort of yellowy orangey sort of color and you can get in there pretty easily and brush them off they don't do any damage coming off that way you find that they the 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 tree's basically disposing of them because they've done what they've had to do they've got too old they're no longer viable no longer useful for the tree's purpose it's got new needles that have come out last spring so it's ready to go, ready to keep moving forward. So two-year-old needles on a Japanese white pine can generally be brushed off. One-year-old needles, so the ones before last spring's growth, are a little bit different. And there's a bit of, not contention, but there's a different approach to how these are, are managed. And some advice is just to leave them alone. Don't, don't remove old needles on a Japanese white pine, but my preference is to still make it look nice. So I will go through and I'll start removing some of those older one-year-old needles. If you pluck them, you're going to be in a position where, because there's five needles per sheath when it comes to a white pine, and that applies to all the white pine species, there are five needles per sheath, they've actually got a fair bit of grip onto the branch. And if you use your tweezers, I've found that you can tear. Sometimes they come out nice and easy, other times they don't and there's resistance and you'll start tearing the, the sheath off the branch and making the damage just like what we talked about with the black pines. All those hidden buds below the surface can get damaged but it's I find it more, more interesting to focus on the damage you're doing to the tree because the, the bonsai's got limited resources and if you're causing this sporadic damage all over the tree by plucking all these needles then the tree's got to put a lot of resources to healing that before it can continue to allocate resources to something else which might get you to your tree's goal a lot earlier than than if you'd done it the other way so what i do with the the more newer needles on the on the white pines is i scissor cut them Right, so I'm not talking about cutting them to a shape or a silhouette or anything like that. What I'm talking about is just above where the sheath is, you know, less than a millimetre above that, going with my scissors nice and sharp, and I cut those needles off. So you're leaving just the sheath and just a tiny little bit, bit of needle. And what happens in that case is over a very short period of time, you'll find that that will go brown and just simply fall off the tree or be able to rub off the tree without doing any damage whatsoever. If you prune the needles, say, for instance, to a silhouette, which I've seen, you know, where um, you want to make the pad look nice and perfect, if you like, and you can get in there with your your scissors and you can cut those needles, you'll find that the needles won't drop off. If you just take the tip off them, you'll just get a nice brown bit right in the very tip of the needle. So that's not the objective that we're talking about. We're talking about needle removal techniques here. So the needle removal technique is to get down as low as you possibly can, get in with your scissors, cut it across across the needles, remove all the needles entirely and then allow for that to die off and go brown and then you can just rub them off nice and easy. So that's that's pretty much what I do with, with white pines. Vast majority of the work is, once the old needles are gone, is, is all scissor work on the, on the needles. It's very rare that I'll, that I'll pluck needles on a white pine, especially when they're healthier, when they're stronger, I find that those needles set in really, really hard. If you're working 
on a weaker white pine, then you might find they start to come out quite easily. But likewise, if if it's a weaker white pine, then be very careful about why you're removing those needles. It's, remember, it's not about right now. It's not about your appreciation of the tree right now. It's about the tree's strength for the next step in its evolution. So maybe leaving it looking a bit shaggy if those needles start coming off really, really easy. Just have a look at it. Just 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 double check exactly what it is that you're doing and, and why you're doing it. All right, so let's move on to radiatas. Radiators typically have three needles per sheath. Again, they set pretty hard, and I find that the vast majority of time that I try and pluck a radiator or a Monterey pine, it's it's very difficult. It's not easy to do, and yet I find that if you you start fighting the needles, if you're if you're fighting them and they're not coming off in the direction they grow, then you'll slip to an easier way to remove them, which is to pull them against the grain, so not in the direction that those needles are growing. And as soon as you do that. Like every other pine out there, you'll find that, or I guarantee that you'll find that you'll start tearing that bark off. So once you start doing damage to the tree by removing the needles, hit the pause button. There's something's got to change with, with how you're doing it, okay? So I will go with a radiata and I will get in and I'll scissor cut. So very, very similar to what I do with, uh, with the white pines. You'll find, again, the needles on a radiata are old old radiata with, um, you know, say three-year-old needles on it, they'll start going brown and falling off. Very normal. Only got a life lifespan of two to three years, the needles anyway. So I find that when I'm getting into them in the, the autumn-winter period, one of the first things I do is get in there and clean out a lot of that those dry old needles that have got into the inner parts of the tree that have fallen in there, that the tree's dumped because they're no longer viable clean that out first and then I start the work I I generally won't start doing the work while it's really congested like that because it's very difficult to work out what's growing what's not growing so that's that's pretty much it Scott's pine let's move on to those they're they're pretty much a pluck I get into those I've got different varieties of the the Scots so I've got to be careful to broad brush every single Scott's pine that I that I work with because three that I've, I can think of off the top of my head are three different varieties of Scots pine, so they, they get treated slightly differently. One of the smaller needle varieties, I love to pluck it. comes out really easy. There's no stress. Needles, needles fly out of that thing like a, like a black pine, so I can pluck. One of the other varieties has got a longer needle on it, and the newer, of, it's very much like a white pine. The newer the needles, the harder they set into the, the sheath, so... It's a combination I use with my Scots pines of plucking and and that needle cutting down very, very low towards the sheath. So I think it's uh, one of those ones that you're going to have to play by ear and and really not um, not be too aggressive with it one way or the other. Don't just assume that you're always going to be plucking these things. Maybe some can be plucked and then other parts cut. Some plucked, some cut. Moving on. The mugo pines, mugo pines, I find that you know they're they're pretty similar too. They're pretty much a, a, a cut a lot of those. Even though I find that you can needle pluck the mugos, my preference is not to do that damage. So I hope that I hope that helps sort of break them into the the two categories. So there's the pluck category where I can, I'll, I'll try and pluck. I definitely know the black pines can do it, and by grabbing one needle out of the two, comes out really easy in the direction it's growing. Leave the sheath there, remove the sheath. That's that's up to you as to how, how precise you want it to be. For me, I just leave it alone. And the other category is the, the cut category for these for these needles. Why we do it? Because they get, you know, they, they set pretty firmly in there. You're gonna do damage to those dormant buds, you're gonna do damage to the bark as well and create create an issue. And there's also the the older needles that for every single pine that we work with, they drop off. So that's pretty much needle removal for, for pines. For cedars, I'll pluck. I reckon they pluck really, really easily. They come out quite well. If, as long as you're plucking, again, the technique is to, to grab the, the needles. Don't look at grabbing a, a bunch of them in, in one hit. You know, Don't grab 10 needles with your tweezers. But get in there and try and get one or two and just pluck them in the direction that they're growing. You know, Pull your hand back. I find that if I can position the branch dead in front of me and I've got the needles facing towards my face, Whatever direction it is, with you know, I, I position myself so I'm moving up and down to 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 reiterate exactly where I'm looking straight down the needle to see exactly how it's growing. I use the tweezers to go in on that angle, and I pluck straight back towards me. 
So it's a nice technique. It's really fast. You can repeat it so quickly. So it's, you know, you're sort of almost jackhammering, dragging off these needles really, really fast with your tweezers as you get more more skilled at it. Until that point, just slowly, you know, sort of grab them, pull them in a direction. Feel for that resistance. That's the that's the big key for needle removal is working out how much resistance you've got and if if plucking the needles is the right way to go. As soon as you start seeing damage, hit the pause button, stop, reset, have a look at it, see if there's another way around to, to get to exactly what you want to do. If, you know, there's a species that I've talked about where I said that I cut them, but yours sort of pop off really easily, just have a look at the tree. It could be, yeah, it could be genetics, could be species related, so go for it. But it might be that the tree is slightly on the weaker side and, you know, those, those needles haven't set quite as firmly as what they should have. If the needles, you know, generally look pretty thin and wispy, that's another indicator for me to, to let me know that maybe it's a bit too weak. So it, um, it might need another course of action. But anyway, that's for, that's for another time. This is talking about needle reduction or needle removal techniques. So thanks for the prompt, Joe, and, yeah, let's move on. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I really do love the subscribers to this podcast. It means a lot to the continuity of it and um, it means a lot to me to know that I've got the support of a, of a range of people out there that um, that really believe in, in what this podcast is about. So thank you very much. And if you aren't a subscriber but you're thinking about it, you can you can jump on board for as little as three dollars a month, and it, like I said, it really does go a long way to supporting the continuity of this this podcast for everybody. So please consider, and if you'd like to, and if you've got the means to, then then jump on board and become a, a bonsai lover like the rest of us. So visual weight, as I said last week, it's really important. It's the it's the ultimate that we we do with our bonsais to make them look perfect by getting that visual weight right. And while it's really important, it's it, the other side of the coin is it's really important to know when to stop. And that stopping might be a couple of reasons. It might be yep, you've achieved your objective, but the one of the really important reasons that you probably need to stop is that you're taking it too far. And by taking it too far, depending on the species, you might find that you're going to actually set the tree back. So your objective that you're trying to achieve might have a detrimental effect and actually take you backwards rather than taking you forwards. All right? Knowing when to put your scissors down is also, also known as overworking your bonsai, very, very simply. Okay? And... Having your plan that we've talked about over and over and over, for, God, for years now it feels like, but it's really important to have that in your mind while you're working on your tree. And it it might be one of those things that you need to, you know, not only reference back to your plan but maybe hit a pause on the work for a bit and just go, okay, now I've got to stop. What should I do now? What's the, do I need to put an extra step in? You know, this might be steps six to seven is, is doing what you're doing right now in your plan. Might be a time to say, okay, let's put in a 6A. 6 is this first cut. 6A is wait three months, bring the tree back and do the same thing over and take it one step further to where you want to get to. So rather than rushing that process, stop, slow down, take your time, then then get into it. There's a juniper I was working on the other day where made it needed a major major rework. It's gonna come out on the YouTube channel soon, you'll see it. And there was one segment of it that I really want to push and work on, which was creating uh, some dead wood on the trunk. And finished the tree, got it all done, sat there, looked at it for a while and went, Okay, so the next step is to get in and do this this work, this dead wood, this shari. Create it. It's simple, it's easy, it's ready to go couple of cuts here and there make it look great the video on youtube will look awesome and you'll you'll see it if you have a look at it it's um yeah you you'll you know which one it is when i'm, I'm talking about it. it's a, a bonsai transformation it's called whether it's out necessarily by the time this podcast comes out is another thing but it's it's coming it's in the works all the filming's done for it. it's just got to be put together and i looked at the tree and i weighed up 
what I'd removed from the tree, what I'd done to the tree, the stress I'd put on it. You know, there's a the major trunk, you know, compression on it as well with the big bending jack. Not that that was too much, but there's stresses. And sort of if I if I accumulate everything that I'd done to that tree in one hit, and I looked at how important the creating of this shari was. You know, forget the video. The video is nice. Like I love, I love creating nice things. But for me, the overall objective is a beautiful bonsai that outlasts time. So, if holding off doing the shari allows me to achieve that objective, and maybe the video has to have another segment added to it later on down the track, or maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't make a video. It's not. That's not my driver. Then I'll definitely do what's in the best interest of the tree. So, you know, I I stopped the video, looked at it, and went, no, I'm not going to do it. I went to bed that night, slept on it, woke up thinking about this tree again. <laughs> and you, yeah, you're starting to get insight as to how my brain works. But I woke up thinking about this shari line on the tree and I went, all right, so go back, reassess it again. Maybe you were tired last time, you know, get a coffee, go and, go and sit in front of this thing and have a look at it. And I sat down in front of the tree again, looked at it for probably half an hour, 40 minutes, really thinking, you know, I had the tools ready to go, everything was out, you know, the the, the knives, I had the... the die grinder, I had buddy Dremel, I had everything ready to go. It wouldn't have been that much. But I looked at it and I decided, just let it go. Just leave it. Let's see what happens. I can always make that somewhere down the track. You know, let's just leave the tree in its state as it is for a while. Give it three, four, five, six months even, even twelve months. I'm not really that fast. But give it time and then I can bring it back in and go, you know what? Here's the next step of this tree's evolution. And I think that that for me was really important when I talk about this part of the podcast because it's something that I have to do as well. It's something that everyone has to do that works on bonsai is you get to the point where, you know, I've talked about being tired before and putting down the tools. That's that's not what this is. This is knowing when you need to stop for the tree's sake and and knowing when to put the scissors down. It's the best analogy I could come up with because experience lets me know now when I do certain things to trees what's going to happen next, what's going to be the backlash for want of a better word, what's going to be the repercussions of what I've done to that tree. And majority of times, I was going to say 100% of the time, it's not probably 100% of the time because it's just not true, but vast majority of the time that I work on my trees, I, I'd rather do them in small segments and chip away at things and go, yep, okay, that's enough for now. All right, that one now, that's enough for that one. And just keep these small little building blocks that I keep pushing and progressing on time and time again and that's come to me because I've done the wrong thing in the past and I've taken things too far and I know that when I when I push the envelope too hard yeah sure I can take that big step forward in my plan but it sets a tree back so my plan the overall objective of my plan not just achieving that step but but getting to that end result or the you know as close to the end result as I can suddenly takes a hell of a lot longer because I've done the wrong thing. I've pushed it too hard and now I've I've just set everything back. So I know that I know that there's times when, you know, calling it quits or leaving leaving a, a tree that I'm working on and saying, you know what, I'm gonna come back tomorrow. You know, no matter what it is. It could be could be three in the afternoon. I still got plenty of time in the day to do whatever I've got to do, but I'll look at it and I'll go, you know what? You've been on this tree for three or four hours now. It's probably time just to let it let it rest, move on to something else, let that tree sit there for a bit, and then come back and reassess it, have a look. And and it's that plan, that 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 overall schematic that I've got for the tree to get from one point to another that I refer back to in my head and say, you're probably better off waiting. You know, you to get there quicker, you've sometimes got to go slower. Now, I think that absolutely everyone listening to the podcast would have heard the saying, it's better be safe than sorry. And that's that should be your approach with all of your bonsai. Absolutely everything. Better to be safe than sorry. There's certain things that we have to do, have to proceed with, you know, repotting and moving from large pots to smaller pots and, and pruning and shaping and bending and all the stuff that, that goes with it. But that better to be safe than sorry and taking your time to do things can be great, you know, like a, a major bend, a, a compression of a trunk. If you can do it over over a day, then why do it in three minutes? 
you know, if you've got time to let the fibres stretch and move, if it's, I'm talking if it's significant, if it's not significant, then there's no no stress, you know. <laughs> don't, don't take the wiring of a branch to take you a week and a half when really it's a, you know, it's a one minute job. I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not being funny with it. I'm just trying to say that you know when you're doing something significant to a tree or if you don't, you know, bounce out, ask, ask the question of somebody. Get to your bonsai network. Get to me and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you reckon? Is it, you know, too much? Should I stop? You know, here's what I've done. Here's what I'm going to get to. <laughs> Whatever it is. But I think that that second opinion and, and sometimes, some t- like I said, some time between, you know, going to make a cuppa, go and get a cup of tea in between doing something else, then come back, look at it and go, you know, have I, have I done enough? Do I need to know when to put the scissors down because... Going too far can set you back. And if you if you do, this is a, this is my advice to you. If you do go too far, if you push the envelope, if you you know that you've stuffed up, right at the end of it, you look at it and go, "Ooh, that's that's probably way more than what I should have done." Best advice I can give you is get that tree and get into somewhere with a bit more protection for a while. You know, don't don't put it straight back into the the exposure of the elements where it was in the past. Maybe it's got to be somewhere a little little less sunny, a little less windy, a little less cold, a little less everything basically, just in a little nursery sheltered somewhere, greenhouse, you know, back back corner somewhere that's protected from from everything. I find that by allowing the tree to stop, recuperate, you know, you might not be set back quite as far as if it gets out into the elements and goes, well, hang on a minute, <laughs> you've just cracked me in half. There's no way I'm going to survive this. So I'm going to let that die, that die and that die and you can get stuffed because you push me too hard. So if you can just put into a nice sheltered environment, just keep an eye on it, you know, baby it through the, the, the seasons until it can get to that next point, I think that that might help you, you know, save a, a, a lost cause or save... What, whatever you've done too much. But, yeah, that knowing when to put the scissors down, that's a that's a big one. And unfortunately, most of us learn that one the hard way and learn it by, um, by negative experience and uh, there's not much you can do about it, but learn for the next time. Now, we're all tree lovers all right? we want perfection with our trees and whatever that perfection is is very unique very individual but we all want some form of perfection and that could be that we want healthy looking bonsai it could be that we want an artistic masterpiece it could be whatever it is right i wanted to talk about in this section of the podcast something which i think we all should strive for now We've got to strive for perfection, not in our bonsai, but in us, in our skills, in our workings, in our methodologies, whatever they are. They don't have to be the same. They don't have to be what I do. They don't have to be what someone else does. It's whatever you do has to be perfect, all right? And I see a lot of acceptance of substandard craft on on bonsai from, from a lot of people. All over the place. And if you think about it, right, if you were getting, you're getting someone in to build a house for you or renovate your bathroom, whatever it is, you're getting someone in, a professional to come in to do your work and they were sloppy with that work. You know, the plaster joins didn't marry up, the roof leaked, you know, the, the bath didn't have a drain put into it, whatever. Whatever it is, you wouldn't accept it. And what I really want to push through the podcast to everybody that listens and everyone that that does bonsai and everyone that loves bonsai is look to do the best you possibly can and look to always improve your skills. And it doesn't matter what stage you're at now. Like I, I, it doesn't. I'm not saying this that if you're brand new to this hobby that you need to become an expert overnight. That's that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is. Whatever level you're at now, be it be it very very start of the journey, or you've been doing it for a thousand years, and you, what you do is is great, is near enough to perfect. Always look to improve it. 
always look to take it to that next level and and don't accept when you do something on your tree, if you look at it and go, I've always wired it like this, that's the way I'm going to do it and it, it's terrible, it looks ugly, it's you know, inefficient, it's, you know, loose wire, it's wrapped around the trunk a million times before it goes down, the, whatever it is. If you look at it and go, well, that's just the way it is, don't accept it. Don't accept it of yourself and and definitely... I think that your your bonsai, your tr- the tree in front of you that you're you're taking this work out on, deserves better. You know, you want this thing to live forever. That's the goal, right? You want it to be magnificent. You've got a plan in the back of your head that in, you know, two hundred and fifty years this thing's going to be whatever, or it might be in three years or five, years, whatever it is. I want. I want you to focus on as we head into this period now, which is a really busy time. Autumn, winter is a busy time with your trees for for styling and shaping and 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 applying wire to these things. It's really important that you don't settle for second best with this, and and don't make your bonsai settle for second best. To you know, we talk about this plan. I, I'm, I'm referring back to it again because. This styling and this work that you do on your trees, whether it's the cuts that you make, you know, whether it's how you apply cut paste or cut putty or whatever it is, whatever it is that you're doing with your trees, you know, if you're in the northern hemisphere, you're repotting your trees, how you tie the tree into the pot, how you put the soil into your pot, the drainage layer and how you you use a chopstick to get in amongst the roots to settle the soil down, how you apply sphagnum moss, how you do whatever it is that you do with your bonsai. To, to be able to achieve these things with your your plan means that you need to be very efficient and very good at what you do. You need to be the best that you possibly can be for now. But whatever the best is right now, it can always get better. It can always improve. You can always practice more. And and this is a really good time. Like as we head into in Melbourne, you know, it's coming just around the corner. It's not far off now where we start getting into a lot of pine work, a hell of a lot of pine work for me. And I like like anything um, like with uh, decandling or like with you know, repotting or or pinching my maples, whatever it is, because I haven't done it for a little while, I'm a little bit rusty around the edges. Not too bad, but I'm a little bit rusty. So I always start with maybe a tree that's a bit more in development, that's got a bit more space for me to work with, that I can get in and do the wire and go, yeah, there it is. Now it's back. Now I'm getting better, and I get to a slightly better tree, and slightly better, and slightly better, and to the point that I sort of crescendo where my skills are, are you know, red hot. I've been practicing. I've done lots of work on it. I, I know the feel of the wire. I know the gauge I've got to use. I know whatever it is I've got to handle. I'm ready. By the time I get some of the best trees in my collection or customers' trees or whatever it is, I'm, I'm, I'm at peak. I'm at peak performance. You know, it's like someone training for – like when you train for a marathon or you train practice train for a grand final or whatever it is, you sort of you crescendo your season at that point. That's that's what we've got to do. And so it's just a, a reiteration, I suppose, or a, a confirmation from me to you as a as a pleading for your bonsai to say, really try and harness in the best skill level that you've got and don't settle for for second best. If you look at something and it looks like crap, if it if it the branch bounces around when you've wired it and you move it or you can see that there's gaping holes in this thing or if it just looks ugly, just stop. Think about how you could do it better. Remove remove whatever it is that you've done if you if you can. Get rid of it and, and reapply it again slowly and do it to the best of your ability. You're better off getting one tree completed in the time you'd normally do 10 than doing 10 trees like rubbish. That's that's the ultimate. You'll achieve a hell of a lot more. Your bonsai will develop a hell of a lot faster. You will achieve your goals a lot quicker. You'll be happier. Your your tree will want to give you a cuddle out of the pot itself as well. So just just focus in on it. And as I said, don't don't accept second rate work. Always look to improve whatever level it is that you're at, and try and and, and make sure you build your skills up. You know, and that a lot of that comes via via practice by uh, lessons, by whatever it is, you know, watching YouTube videos till your eyes fall out of your head, whatever it is, but get that skill level right, you know, zoom in, slow down, practice, repeat, you know, get it right. But most importantly, as I said, don't accept don't accept well, second-class work on your bonsais because your trees don't deserve it. They definitely deserve the best.
But well, folks, as I said, happy Easter. It's a great time of the year. Make sure you spend it with the nearest and dearest and your, your trees as well. Make sure they get lots of love. And just a reminder too about the, the timing of the year for us. It's uh, it's an awesome time to fertilise your trees. Maybe not for your neighbours when they're out there doing their Easter egg hunt and you've um, you've stunk the joint out, but that settles down over time and I guarantee you'll um, you'll be paid back in spades for it. So, you know, and think about that that needle removal technique. I hope that's helped a little bit, but really they're the, they're the main two categories. It's plucking or cutting and the cutting technique is nice and low down to the to the sheath and eventually it'll it'll fall off. The the stop for me is stop and think about things is when you start looking down at the branch where you've been plucking needles and you're doing more damage than good. That's not the intention, it's not what you not what you want to do and and just make sure that you take it easy. So uh, I am really looking forward to the next week too. I off to the um, Bonsai Open up at the Central Coast. So I'll let you know all about that. I cannot wait to get to this show with this this big prize money and see the quality of the trees that are there and, and be part of it. And do demos and meet um, meet a lot of people that listen to the to the podcast. So, as always, I'd like to throw out a thank you to the subscribers. A few few new ones on board. Thank you very much. It's um, it's awesome. I love you. Love you nearly and, and and dearly. I honestly do. So thank you very much. Please um please enjoy your bonsai at this time of the year. Change of seasons, lovely. It's my fav- one of my favourites. I say every season's my favourite, but seriously, it's um autumn. Autumn is lovely. It's a very nice nice time of the year to start seeing some of that hard earned colour that we we should be seeing in our in our deciduous. Watch the wiring on your trees. Things do start to swell quite significantly at this time of the year too. So if you do have wire on your trees, it's a really nice time to get out there and actually start removing some of this um, this stuff before it does any damage, especially to your deciduous and your, and your natives. Don't, um, don't let that damage become something that you can uh, see for the next 20 or 30 years. So thank you for listening in. Love your patronage. Love you all. Give your trees cuddle for me. And until next time, happy bonsai. Thank you.